do is turn this over to Greg uh, Cassidy, uh, who is uh, doing the build for the Connor Wingo model. Uh, Chris, uh, of course, can't be here this evening. He had to uh, be out of town. So uh, Greg is going to have to do the last one here uh, all by himself. So Greg, thank you so much. And I'll turn it over to you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Let me get stuff fired up. Okay, welcome everyone to the last first New Tracks Build Along. I'm Greg Cassidy. I call it the first New Tracks Build Along because Jim has a lot more of these lined up after this one and I'm looking forward to them all. Uh, but this is the last build of the Conowingo Models Gray Street Company House version. So I'll take you through, this is gonna be part five. We'll be doing the roofing and the finishing touches. Um, as always, I'll be covering techniques that any modeler may know. Here's what I'm doing with this kit. We'll start with the roofing. Roll roofing or mineral surface roll. If you look up roll roofing MSR, you're gonna find out it isn't very good. Uh, it leaks, it doesn't wear for very long. Uh, its only advantage is it's cheap and it's easy to put down which is why we see it used a lot, which is great for us that model it. Now, the last time we were working with the roofing, we had the construction paper that came in the kit and we had spray painted it a gray and then a black over that. And what we're gonna do with that is slice it into strips that are about three feet wide and then sand the edge of that on a block. That gives us the look of how it wears and then we're ready to put it down. We'll take the strips of roofing and we're gonna attach those to the roof panels that we painted previously. And once you glue your strips down, you want the edge that you sanded to overlap. And you can use white glue for gluing this down and then you can have the ends go over the edge of the roofing. And after you have them all glued down, you go ahead and trim the overhang off. I like to leave a little bit overhanging and you'll see why later. First, we're gonna glue the back roof in place. I'll put a bead of white glue around on the top of the walls. And in some cases, I'll put a brace up at the front of the roof, but you don't really need to do that. And then we'll glue the porch roof on the front and it's done the same way. You just put a bead of glue on the two roof supports and across the brace that's sitting on the porch posts. And in both of those, make sure they're centered right and left. And then last, we'll go ahead and glue on the main roof. And again, you just put a bead of glue around on the walls. And this is the way I like to weigh it down while it's drying. And again, you'll want to make sure it's centered right and left. Now, my friend Bob Farquhar has a bean bag that he uses on his roofs. I didn't have a bean bag, but I did have some BBs and a plastic bag. So I thought I'd give it a try. It didn't work as well as Bob's does, but it did work. And once you get the main roof glued on, you need to attach a ridge strip. And for this, you take just take another sheet of your roofing and fold it in half and then glue it in place. Now this is where I like those edges overhanging a little bit. If you kind of roll them down once you have the roofs glued on, it makes it look like it's old and worn. And I think it just gives a better look to it. Now on one of the kits I built, I put a metal corrugated roof on the porch. This is something that somebody may have done when they had to replace the roofing and this was all they could find or this was all they could do. Uh, feel free to experiment with corrugated roofing. You can find these roofing panels for many online modelers. Next thing we're going to do is fit the roof trim. This is the 132nd by 332nd strip wood that we painted earlier. First thing you need to do is mark where you're going to cut the trim. 
I'll put it underneath the piece of roof and then use a pencil to mark it. Now you can go ahead and cut it by hand or use a chopper. Um, one of the things that I think is the ultimate tool for this type of job is the Ultimation Sander. For this type of work, it's the best thing in the world you can have because you set the angle once and then you can just make as many as you want and they're all at that same angle. However you make them, you want to make one master, make sure it fits well, and then go ahead and make copies of that one. Uh, making the first one is a little trial and error, but once you get one done, the rest are easy. What you want to try and get is a nice tight fit up under the corner of the roof and then a nice overhang on the corner trim. Now, once you've glued those in place, you'll also want to do the same under the back roof. And once all of your roof trim is in place, I'll use a tiny brush to touch up the ends, just using the same color as we painted the walls with. Now we're going to finish up the porch. <clears throat> For this railing, we're going to be using the same 132nd by 332nd strip wood. Now I'm going to show you two ways you can cut that, that you can cut that top rail that sits there. The way that I show it here is a little bit harder, but it looks a little bit better. And this is the way that it's shown in the instructions. You can see you have to cut a couple notches out of there, and they have to be in the right place for where you have the posts. Now an easier way is what I show here where you just have separate rail pieces on top of the lower rail. This one's a little easier to do. Now to do that one, you just take your lower post and hold it up against the porch posts and mark where they go. And then you'll just cut a piece of upper railing to fit in between the marks. So it's pretty easy to do. Now, when we go to mount the lower rail, we're going to want to put marks three feet up from the bottom, and that's going to be the bottom of the lower rail. But there's one way that I do it that makes it a little bit easier, and that's to cut two spacers that are three feet high. And then you set those spacers there, put your glue on the back of the lower rail, and just set it down on those spacers. It makes it real easy to get in position. And then after that, you're going to glue your top rail on whichever way you ended up making it. And again, you can just use white glue and it should fit right in there. And now for the side rail, you're going to do the same thing. You put your lower rail on and then put your upper rail on top of it. And these should overlap the corner trim. Now in one of the houses I built, I put in a broken rail. And then I used a two by four to act as a guard against people falling through it. Company houses aren't always in the best shape. So that's why I wanted to do this. Next, we're going to do the roof details. And this is where you can add your stovepipe. And I'll show you an optional chimney. This is the stovepipe that comes in the kit. And I just painted mine a flat black. And then I rusted it with a rust wash. Now you can use any flat black. And if you have a rust wash, you can use that or you can use some thinned orange paint. Now one of the tricky parts of these tishy smoke jacks is getting it to sit right on an angled roof. And that's because it comes with the flat flashing that you see there you need to make an angle in that base plate. And here's how I do it. I use a rat tail file and I'll stick it inside the base plate. And while I'm turning it, I'll lift up so that I'm actually getting an angle that I'm making in that. And that makes it a lot easier to get the stovepipe to sit straight on an angled roof. So once you've got it ready to mount, you just wanna use some ACC and drill a hole wherever you wanna put it in the roof and glue it in. 
Um, you may need to hold it to make sure it's straight up while, it, while the glue is setting. Many company houses only had one stove that they'd use for both heating and cooking. But the ones I was making were gonna have a chimney on them as well. So I moved the stove pipe to the back of the house where there might be a kitchen. Now, if you wanted to use this chimney, it's available from, available from Tishy as part 8123, or Chris says you can email him at Conowingo Models about one. So you'll want to cut the chimney at the roof angle. You can leave it flat and put a square hole in the roof, but I find that a lot harder. So you can use either a saw or a chopper to cut that angle. And then once you have it cut, you want to make sure that it sits upright. You can use a sanding stick or a file to make minor adjustments so it sits up straight. And then after I do that, I'll take a round plastic dowel and glue it inside. The advantage of this is you only need to drill a hole in the roof instead of cutting a square hole that fits. And after I did that, I just painted it a dull red. You can use any kind of flat red or flat brown. That'll work for this. And I'll show you how I put the mortar in my chimney. I use this lightweight spackling. There are a lot of methods for putting in mortar using paint, pigment, toothpaste, special products. You may have your favorite way of doing it. Once I put the spackling in the mortar joints, then I'll scrape it off using a small spatula and just let it dry. Now, once I have my chimney and my stovepipe ready to mount, I'll go ahead and drill the appropriate holes in the roof. Now, if you put the smokestack on the back part of the house, you want to drill your hole just inside the edge of the wall. And then for gluing the chimney on the roof, you just need to put glue around the base of the chimney and it gives you a nice secure mount that I think works better than cutting a square hole in the roof. And for the smokestack, to make sure it's sitting up straight, you can glue it to the inside wall. And that's the advantage of having the hole right next to the wall. Oh, right. Now I'm gonna show you a couple of weathering suggestions. This is how that I weathered these houses. I like to use powdered artist pigments. There are lots of other weathering products out there that you can use. You can use stains to weather your building after you've built it. Or you can use chalks. These show ones that come in sticks and powdered chalks. Or you can use washes that are available or even oils. The company houses live in a really dirty, dusty environment. And these powdered pigments are really good at replicating that. That's why I wanted to use them here. Now I use brushes and you can see here where I've done some streaking on the roof using a variety of colors. And you can use a lighter brown or a darker brown on the lower parts of the wall and on the porch area. Now I use the soft brushes for putting these on. Or I'll use a narrow brush for doing streaking coming down from windows, whether it's paint or dirt. You can also use weathering pencils. These are a water activated pigment and you can use these for streaking as well. In this case, I'm using them for rust streaking down from nails holding the railing on. I made the nail holes just using a sharp number two pencil. And then I use more pigments on the stovepipe in the back. It gives you a really kind of rough texture that makes it look like rust is on the stovepipe. And you can see more window streaking on the roof here. And now we should be all finished. Uh, since I was building four of these for a layout, this is a small company house village. Uh, for this layout, we wanted them to be company houses, but after they've been there for a while, 
So they've gone through some changes. And you can see how with this kit, you have the same basic design. They've just been changed over the years. And a simple kit will give you many variations by just changing the color, the roofing, the way one looks. Now, if any of you are building the O scale model, most everything that I've talked about tonight will apply to what you're building as well. You've had to build the foundation and porch from a variety of parts. And the only thing that you'll need will be some 1 16th by 3 16th inch strip wood for the porch rails. Everything else should be in the kit. And like Jim said, Chris isn't able to make it here tonight, but we want to make sure that you know about my build next week. And that's going to be a wrap up of the Conowingo Models Gray Street Company House version. And there's going to be a free stuff alert coming up. Basically, Chris is asking all who share their builds with this key, kit, whether it's HO or O scale, you'll be entered to win a free HO scale kit, Dardanelle's shanty kit from Conowingo Models. It's like one of the buildings on the right. And this isn't going to be a contest. It's going to be a drawing. So don't feel you don't have a chance. Everybody has an equal chance. Uh, the only thing we're asking is that the presenter will show a gray street house in any version. It can be finished or it can still be in the middle of working on it. Uh, the raffle will, will be done once all the participants have presented it and you must be present to win. And we're highly encouraging that you email Chris Course to save a spot so that we know how many are going to be there. His email is railrunner130 at hotmail.com. And I'll put it in the chat window after this presentation. So that's the end of the Conowingo build along. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Well, Greg, I can't thank you enough for doing this. You, you were the, uh, the guinea pig for this project. <laughs> And uh, you and Chris have really uh, come forward and done a magnificent job. So thank you so very much. I'd well, also like to say it's been a reason, pleasure. I'd also like to say the, the reason for doing these, I, and I hope you picked up some of it tonight, are the tips that Greg can give you along the way to maybe help improve your modeling, not just on this project, but on other projects that you may build. Uh, and tips like how to, uh, to do the railing in front how to do some of the weather, weathering, how to do some of the, uh, the, the structure bills that he's gone into in the past few shows. This kind of information, if, you, if you've never built a kit before, if you never have scratch built anything before, the kind of tips that hopefully you'll pick up from these presentations will make you a better modeler and, and more proud of the model that you produce. So Greg, again, I can't thank you enough for being the guinea pig for this series. And thanks so much for both you and Chris uh, stepping up and wanting to do this for us. My pleasure. I'm looking forward to the rest of